Hey everybody, this is Brett, and I'll tell you a little story about something that happened just the other day to me that was really quite scary. It's almost time to move. This is my last day, and a few days ago when my car stopped running, that's the scary part, it was only three days before I'm supposed to move and I'm thinking to myself as I'm sitting there cranking on the starter and it's not starting, I'm thinking, oh no, oh no, this is the last thing I need. And then I'm like, well, I've got towing on my insurance. So I, I called the tow truck and they came and as I'm sitting out on the road waiting for them to come, I was just like, in a bad way. I was just freaking out in my mind totally and really really nervous and wondering how much this is going to cost me and blah blah blah. So the guy, sh um, actually what I did was I said to myself, you know, you've been in bad situations before and things will turn out all right and this is probably a godsend. This is probably something that needs to happen so that you can fix the car before you're out on the road. Because, you know, I haven't found a place yet. If you don't know that, you do now. I haven't found a place yet, and so I'm just been, I've been putting my stuff into storage. And then after I get everything into storage, then I can focus on finding a good place. But first I think I'm going to go do a little vacationing, to relaxing, because it's been a hard month. Hard. So, I said to myself, you know, just imagine that you were put here on the earth for one day. Just for one day, by creation, God, whatever you like, and, and you're just here for one day to enjoy as much as you can enjoy. And so I started looking up at the trees and feeling the slight breeze, warm day, beautiful time of year, my favorite. And, um, yeah, I started feeling better within minutes. And I was like, okay, you can get through this. And a few minutes later, the tow truck arrived. We got it up onto the tow truck. And we're driving down the road. And I asked him how much this was going to cost me. And he said $75. And we took it out to the mechanic that installed the low mileage Japanese motor last year, if you remember that. And I told him the symptoms, that it would start and then kind of quit, and that it had been doing that for a few weeks now and progressively getting worse. And, um, and he said, you know, I think that it's the fuel pump. But right now, we can't get to the fuel pump because it's on the, the, the tank. It's on the gas tank. That's why we'd never replaced that before, because it wasn't under the hood. It's on the gas tank. And he says, I've got this truck over there that has no engine in it, and that's the only lift that I have. And so, and then he remembered, hey, maybe we can get to it from underneath the seat, underneath the back seat. And sure as you know what, underneath the back seat, there's a little access door to be able to change the fuel pump. And I said, all right, well, you know, anybody that's gone through automotive repair knows that it could be the fuel pump, but if it's not, then you just spent all that money on a fuel pump and installing it, etc. And then you're out on the road soon thereafter, and it starts happening again, and it's the same thing, and you got to start over. But considering all the evidence, it seemed that his guess was probably very likely to be the problem. And so he called the auto parts store and they delivered the part in 30 minutes to his house. Okay. He installed it within 40 minutes. And wait, let me tell you about the problem with that. Okay, so the line coming from the motor, going from the, the gas tank to the motor, there's a little bolt connecting to this, the steel threaded other bolt. Okay, and you have to hold it with one wrench and then undo it with the other wrench. Okay, it was rusted. 
and it was the original fuel pump. 260,000 miles on it, right? And it was rusted, solid. He sprayed it with some lubric, some release stuff, and he stripped the nut. And then he put some vice grips on it. And he had to just keep tightening the vice grips. And in the meanwhile, this nut is getting more chewed up, more and more chewed up, and looking worse and worse. And I'm like, I walked to the front of the car, and I got in squatting position and put in my, my hands in prayer position. I said, Lord, please help this freaking nut to come undone. God, please help this nut to come undone. And so I got back in the car. I'm, I'm looking down at him trying to get this thing to snap. And all of a sudden, that's exactly what it did. Bah! It snapped and came undone. <laughs> and so... He took the fuel pump in and swapped all the little parts, put it back in, installed it, and I started the car to see if it leaked. It didn't leak. <laughs> okay, so we put it back together and it seemed like it was running good. In fact, it seemed like it was running better than before. And that was two days ago and it's run perfect ever since. So I'm just about out of here, and soon I'll be doing the regular ending to a place video. You know what that is, right? Have you seen those videos? It's called Just a Shell, and then the last one was Just a Shell 2. So this will be Just a Shell 3, and um, I hope that you're having a really good day. I'm not worried. Because I know that if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in this world, all will be well.